Hey everybody, Tom Ballator here with a walkthrough for problem number two in PSET one. If you haven't already watched the walkthrough for problem number one, go do that right now because there's some ideas that I talk about that are relevant here that I assume you will already have seen. Problem number two, great problem because it builds on problem number one with a few extra bells and whistles, and it really explores what you learned in week one. So let me explain, first of all, what I mean by that. Three main concepts I think are going to be useful for problem number two. One is the for loop idea that we saw before, but this time with a little bit of a twist. We'll talk about that. Second thing is um, the concept of indexing into a string or slicing into a string. In the previous problem, what we saw was, well, we just simply looked at values in a given string for each character. This time, we might want to go arbitrarily to slices of a string and check values. Three is before we were looking exactly at a character. Is it a vowel or not? Is it equal to an A or an E or whatever? In this case, we might want to look at more than just a single character, but rather a substring of characters, a run of characters. In this case, three for the test case. Okay, so those are three new ideas. Let's explore those. But first, let's read the problem itself. So assume S is a string of lowercase characters, same as before. Write a program that prints the number of times the string B-O-B, so Bob, occurs in S. So for example, if S is equal to this, then your program should print, well, the number of times Bob occurs is two. Okay, so how would you solve this problem? You know, if you didn't have a computer and you know somebody said, hey, I'll pay you if you can tell me how many Bobs are in this, how would you do it? Well, you'd look at it, right? And then you would iterate over S, looking for, in this case, not a single letter, but a string of three letters. And when I say string in this case, I mean strung together a substring, a sequence of three letters that are equal to B-O-B in this case. And visually you can see, well, oh, here's one, there's a B-O-B. Um, you might have a little debate about the second one right here, B-O-B, is that possible to use that because this B right here has already been used in the first Bob? For this problem, that's totally fine. You can reuse that B, okay? so. In, indeed, and, and once you look at those, you get to the end here, G's and H's, K's and L's. Okay, there's no more Bobs. Again, you got that counter that we had from problem number one, and you found two Bobs. Excellent. Let's take a look at Python Tutor for some ways that which you might want to um, implement that idea into Python. So in Python Tutor, earlier we had an example like this. We had my string, and that had what value of A, B, C, D, E, I think we were using, right? Yeah, and then we had a very simple for loop that Python allows you to do, say for letter or for item, for character, whatever, in my string, and then we were printing out the letter, right? So let's do that just for a refresher here. This will print out, well, each letter that appears in that iterable object called my string, and you're done, A, B, C, D, and E. Very nice. Now, there's a different way of doing a for loop actually though. You don't have to use this for letter in syntax, but rather you can also say for a range. Okay, so I'm hopefully hoping that you saw that in the lecture. Um, let's think how range works here. We could say for letter in range. Well, we know that my string is five letters long, so let's just try for letter in range five, and then let's print the letter again here. Okay, now this is not going to work the way you might be expecting, but let's uh, let's comment this one out here, right here. Um, for letter in range five, print the letter. I Ideally, I'd like to see A, B, C, D, E here, but actually I'm seeing zeros and ones and twos and threes and fours. We're gonna make use of that, okay? But just know that range, this sequence generator range is going to be giving you a list of integers, well, a, a sequence of integers it's ranging from, in this case, zero up and two, but not including five. So zero through four is what we got there. Okay, so actually, you know, calling this for letter was really wrong. I should have been saying for something like um, i, that's a good letter to use for an arbitrary integer. So for i in range five, print i, that would have worked out. Okay, so let's set the for loop aside for a second and let's talk about indexing into strings because this is related. So you might remember, again, from lecture, we had something like um, this square bracket syntax in which we could index into a string. So in Python starting at zero, this will give me the zeroth element of my string. Let's print it out. Okay, so what should that say? Ah, you know what? Let's also comment this out so we don't have to step through all that. Okay, what do you think it's gonna say? 
A. Yeah, because the zeroth element of my string is A, the first character, right? Uh, let's try this with a one here. So the first or the oneth, it's really the second one that appears here. Oh, it should be a B. And it is a B. Um, oh, yeah. Here's an error that you're going to see many times in problem two and definitely in problem three. What's going to happen here? I'm asking for what's the 42nd element of my string? Well, it doesn't have one because it's not that long. So it says index error, string index out of range. So if you've seen that error, and you will see it, I'm pretty sure, make sure that you haven't iterated too far over something because you're not allowed to go past the ends of the thing you're iterating over. Doesn't make sense. Computer's letting you know as your friend. All right, so that was interesting. But what can we do here? Can you imagine up here when we have this for i in range five, maybe instead of printing just out that number itself, we might want to print out the actual index of the string at that point, or the index, excuse me, the value at the index. So how about this? Let's comment that back in like that. And let's type my string right here. And let's put the i in the square brackets. So earlier, you know, we could have said, and let me do this wrong, wrong first. Let's say zero right here. So for five times, let's print out the zeroth element of the string. Okay, maybe not that interesting, but let's see what happens here. It's going to say a, 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 a. Okay, well, that makes sense because every time through that loop, I'm saying print out the zeroth element of the string. And that's not changing, it's an a. But a little magic here, if you put in an i, i is changing based on the range sequence. What's this going to print out? A, B, C, D, E. Well, that's pretty cool. OK, so you've seen two types of for loops so far. You've had the for something in something, and then also for i in range something. OK, that's great. So definitely for this problem, you're probably going to make use of these, these numbers that you can get out of the range because you want to index in. And let's, uh, let's put this on pause one more time here, right here. And let's talk about not just indexing, but slicing into strings. So slicing would be not taking just one piece, but maybe a chunk of a string. How can we do that? Well, for example, let's say my string. Oh, let's take the, uh, the first two characters of my string. This is a mistake. I know that, but keep an eye on this. 0 through 1. That should give me an A and a B, right? OK, let's see if that actually works. Let's print that out. All right. Oh, it only gave me the first one. Why would that be? I put 0 and 1. Do you remember? Well, that's because technically when you're slicing into here, this the first, the left-hand element is included. So from 0, including 0, up into but not including this number. So it's from zero and up into one, but not including one. So that's only zero and it's only one element. So if I really want to get the first two elements in the string, the zero and the first, I can't even speak, the one element, this is how you would do it. That's just the way Python is. So get used to it. Um, a, B, there it is. So that's kind of cool, right? Okay, so you can imagine how up here, Maybe, maybe, let's comment that out and bring this back. Let's imagine right here, you don't want to look at just the ith element of the string. You want to look at it a, a slice. And we were looking at like three character slices, I think, for the bobs, right? So I want to go from i up until, let's say if I want to find the first three characters, how would I do that? I'd go from 0 to two because that's zero one and two no it's not inclusive right so i'd have to say three right here okay so what's I actually going to print out here let's see so the first time through there it says abc are the zero one and two elements the next time through there it's going to say abc 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 because nothing's changing why would it change be odd if it did change but this is the coolest thing here is you could actually probably put in something else maybe. Let's say that little i that you had before. That's going to be changing. So if you do this, you might be actually taking chunks at a time. Let's see what we get out of that. Oh, ABC, that looks good. Now i is no longer 0. It's 1. So now it's 
1 colon 4. So that should give me B, D, B, C, D, D, E, M, and then on to this. Now, the next one right here, this is the tricky part. Is that going to give me, what, what can it give me? Because there is no F in the string. D, E, and E. Huh. So that's not necessarily a syntax error, but it's not what I really want. So when you're doing something like this in your code, you need to think about what you pass into the range here for this problem. Now, related to that question here is I hard coded a five in here. There's no need to hard code a five in there. Ideally, you will have strings of different length coming in. Do you remember how to check for the length of a string? Well, Python, fortunately, lets you just do that out of the box with something called len. So len allows you to find the length of something. So the length of um, my name, T-O-M, how long is that? Let's print that out. Alrighty, hopefully that's three. It's three, I've been right all these years. Amazing, huh? Okay, so your job is pulling all of these things together. Now, in the beginning, I had said there are three things. So the for loop was one issue, and you've seen a new for loop here using range instead of just in, so that's nice. The second thing was the indexing and the slicing of strings. That's another important thing. The third thing I said was about the differences in uh, the comparisons. So earlier we had, um, in the first example, problem number one, we had, you know, if if uh, if a character was a vowel. So if, if the character is equal to A or is equal to E or I or O or U, then do something. In this case, if you look at the problem, remember, we're not looking for that. We're looking for actual if the three character long sequence is equal to Bob. So that's a little bit different, but I think you could probably do that, right? Hopefully that's enough to get you on the track for solving problem number two. So good luck with that. If you have questions, go to the forum, post them there. We'll be happy to help you out and uh, see you in problem number three, which is uh, even harder and more interesting than problem number two. So bye-bye.